We are now joined by Professor Thomas Porge. Professor Porge is Leitner Professor for Philosophy and International Affairs at Yale University. Professor Porge, thank you for your time. Thank you for being with us. Pleasure. Thank you. Uh, Professor Porge, being a speaker at the winner session of this year's St. Gallen Wings of Excellence Award under the topic Empowering the Next Generation, in a nutshell, what needs to be done in order to give power to a new generation? Well, we have to ask ourselves, first of all, uh, whom do we want to empower? Uh, that the new generation will take power is a matter of course. The old generation will die off and new people from the new generation will take power. But uh, who and how many of them will actually have their interests represented, their voices represented? And if present trends are any guide, it will be a very small elite that will dominate the world and the vast majority of the new generation will not be empowered. They will be marginalized and excluded and they will be left with a very small share of global household income. Okay, thank you. Reminding us of this year's topic of the St. Gallen Symposium, Rewarding Courage, is acting against the current rewarded within society? Uh, in some situations it is, and in other contexts it is not. It is certainly rewarded when you do within the rules what society rewards, for example, by innovating, by developing uh, new trendy gadgets that people might want to purchase and so on. So you can do courageous things. You know, Stephen Jobs is maybe a paradigm example of that, a very courageous man who had wonderful ideas and made incredible amounts of money doing that. What is not rewarded is thinking, I think, about values, trying to think how one can make the world bring it more in conformity with our values and essentially going against the interests of the global elite that is currently dominating rule-making both at the national and at the supranational level. Okay. Professor Parge, if you had to think of three unique aspects that set the St. Gallen Symposium apart, uh, what would they be? Uh, you mean apart from other symposia apart of a similar, symposia, of a similar sort of... Apart from sort other of conferences. Yeah, I think that the, actually the symposium is relatively similar to other things I've participated in, so uh, it, it's not all too different from it. Uh, what is probably a, a little different is the role of the younger generation so that uh, younger people are explicitly included and uh, the selection process, which is also quite interesting that people from all different countries have the opportunity to submit essays and become participants at this event. Uh, it was, I mean, uh, Mrs. Ishikura said that uh, about a thousand people had submitted essays and that's not a very large number, so I hope that in future years there will be better publicity so that more people in more different countries really have an opportunity to come here and be heard. And not only graduate students perhaps, because that is again people who come from the richest and most privileged families who have an opportunity to go to graduate school. I think it would be great to hear from some people, ordinary people who are not so privileged and get their voices in here as well. Thank you, Professor Porge, for granting us some of your time. Enjoy your evening, enjoy your time sure. at the St. Gallen Symposium. Thank yeah. you. Thanks.